data driven decision making has become the key to all business decisions in companies companies are now in need of fast reliable scalable and easy to use workspace for data engineers data analysts and data scientists this is where you will need to understand what is azure data bricks hello everyone and welcome to this session today we'll talk and learn about azure data bricks from its definition to how it works with a quick hands on but before we get started do subscribe to edubreakers youtube channel and click the bell button to never miss out any updates from us if you are interested in learning more about azure and its services after watching this session and wish to enroll for edubreakers azure certification course then do check out the link given in the description below so let's take a brief look at the agenda of this session first we'll understand what is databricks followed by azure databricks and then we'll see why do we need to use azure databricks and how does azure databricks work with a quick hands on at last we'll look on to some of the most popular use cases for azure databricks so with no wait let's get started as i said before knowing what is azure databricks we must know what databricks actually is Well according to the definition Databricks is a web based platform for working with Apache Spark that provides automated cluster management and IPython style notebooks. So basically Databricks developed by the creators of Apache Spark is nothing but a web based platform which is also one stop product for all data requirements like storage and analysis. It was originally founded to provide an alternative to the MapReduce system and provide a just-in-time cloud-based platform for big data processing clients. It can derive insights using Spark SQL, provide active connections to visualization tools such as Power BI, ClickView, and Tableau, and also build predictive models using Spark ML. Databricks also can create interactive displays, text, and code tangibly. So in short it is an alternative to a MapReduce system. Databricks is now integrated with Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform and Amazon making it easy for the business to manage a colossal amount of data and carry out machine learning tasks. As we got to know that Databricks is integrated with all the three cloud based platforms today we'll discuss on one of those that is Azure Databricks. So let us understand what is Azure Databricks. Azure Databricks Lake House is a platform that offers a uniform collection of tools for building, deploying, sharing and supporting enterprise grade data solutions to a scale. It integrates with cloud storage and security in your cloud account and manages and deploy cloud infrastructure on your behalf. Azure Databricks supports Python, Scala, R, Java and SQL as well as data science frameworks and libraries including TensorFlow, PyTorch and Scikit-learn. Now that we have come to know what is Azure Databricks, let us understand why should we use Azure Databricks. Well, our customers use Azure Databricks to process, store, clean, share, analyze, model and monetize their data sets with solution from power bi to machine learning you can use azure databricks platform to build many different applications spanning data personas customers who fully embrace the lake house take full advantage of the unified platform to build and deploy the data engineering workflows machine learning models and analytics dashboard that power innovations and insights across an organization The Azure Databricks workspace provides user interfaces for many core data tasks including tools which we'll be discussing one by one. So first is optimize Spark engine. It is a simple data processing on auto scaling infrastructure powered by highly optimized Apache Spark for up to 50x performance gains. Next is machine learning runtime. It is a one click access to pre-configured machine learning environment. for augmented machine learning with state of the art and popular frameworks such as pytorch tensorflow and scikit-learn we also have mlflow that is 
used to track and share experiments, reproduce runs, and manage model collaboratively from a central repository. Well, here you can use your preferred language including Python, Scala, R, Spark SQL, and .NET, whether you use serverless or provisioned compute resources, so that you can quickly access and explore data, find and share new insights, and build models collaboratively with the language and tools of your choice. In Azure Databricks, you have enterprise-grade security, which is an effortless native security that protects your data where it lives and creates complaint, private, and isolated analytics workspace across thousands of users and database. Apart from that, it is also production ready. That means you can run and scale your most mission critical data workloads with confidence on a trusted data platform with ecosystem integration for CI CD and monitoring. You also have collaborative notebooks through which you can quickly access and explore data, find and share new insights, and build models collaboratively with the languages and tools of your choice. And the most important thing, it has Delta Lake that brings data reliability and scalability to your existing data lake with an open source transactional storage layer designed for full data lifecycle. It has a native integration with Azure services. That means you can complete your end-to-end -end analytics and machine learning solution with deep integration with Azure services such as Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Lake Storage, Azure Machine Learning and Power BI. Last but not the least, it has an interactive workspace. That means you can enable seamless collaborations between data scientists, data engineers and business analysts. So these were the key features that makes Azure Databricks unique. Till now, we have got an idea about the Databricks and Azure Databricks and why are we using Azure Databricks. Now let us deep dive in by understanding how does Azure Databricks actually work. As I said, Azure Databricks is structured to enable secure cross-functional team collaboration while keeping a significant amount of backend services managed by Azure Databricks so you can stay focused on your data science and data analytics and data engineering tasks. It operates out of a control plane and a data plane. Although architectures can vary depending on the custom configuration, such as when you have deployed a Azure Databricks workspace to your own virtual network, which is also known as VNet injection. Now let us consider this architecture. It is a common structure and a data flow of an Azure Databricks. Here it consists of control plane and data plane. So let us understand what is control plane. The control plane includes the backend services that Azure Databricks manage in its own Azure account. Notebook commands and many other workspace configurations are stored in the control plane and encrypted at the rest. If we talk about data plane, it is managed by your Azure account and it is where your data resides. This is also where data is processed. You can use Azure Databricks connectors so that your clusters can connect to external data sources outside your Azure account to ingest data or for storage. You can also ingest data for external streaming data sources such as event data, streaming data, IoT data, or many more. Well, your data is stored at rest in your Azure account in the data plane and in your own data sources, not the control plane. So you maintain control and ownership of your data. If we talk about the job results, then it resides in storage in your account itself. Interactive notebook results are stored in the combination of control plane that is partial result for presentation in the UI and your Azure storage. If you want interactive notebook results stored in only your cloud account storage, then you can ask Databricks representative to enable interactive notebook result in the customer account for your workspace. Note that some metadata about results such as chart columns names continues to be stored in control plane itself. So this is the basic architecture of 
Azure Data Break. To know it more in simplified manner, let us have a quick hands-on on Azure Data Bricks. So here we'll be integrating Azure Data Bricks with the Azure Blob Storage, that is a service provided by Microsoft Azure. So as you can see, this is a small workflow of how we'll be working on the demo. So as we know, Azure Blob Storage and Azure Data Bricks are both services provided by Microsoft Azure. Now these are two separate services. But as long as you are using them in same resource group, you can integrate these two services. Well, now you must be wondering why do we need to combine these? So let's say that Microsoft Azure provides a multitude of services. It is often beneficial to combine multiple services together to approach your use case. So if we combine multiple services, then we don't need to engage your local hardware in anything like well, for example, currently I'm using a laptop. Maybe my laptop can be of lower configuration or it might not have enough space to process a huge amount of data. In that case, I would want the cloud service to handle all my use cases and my big data storage that I have. So in this workflow, as we said that we will integrate Azure Data Breaks and Azure Blob Storage. That means we're going to combine them. So here, what you do basically is you interact with the coding notebook, which is nothing but the IPython or Jupyter notebook that your Azure Databricks will create. Then what you do is then you type some coding commands in your coding notebook. And then these commands are sent to the Databricks service. And then what happens is the Databricks service receives the commands from the coding notebook and it sends those commands to your Azure cluster. So whatever cluster you have created after creating your data bricks. So whatever commands that we are writing in the coding notebook is sent through data bricks to your clusters that you have created. Now, depending on the authentication provided to the cluster with regards to your blob storage account, the authentication commands are then sent to the blob storage account saying that the data is fetched from the desired directory then it is brought back inside the cluster and that data that has received by the cluster then is processed and whatever output you get out of after the process is you can see it on your coding notebook now whatever output you receive from the coding notebook you can also store that particular output that you have called from the coding notebook back to your blob storage account or space. So all of this is integrated easily and it is handled in a very simpler manner. Well, now that we have understood the architecture, let us now know how to implement it with a hands-on. For this, we need to quickly sign in to our Azure portal. So once we sign in, we land in our dashboard of the Microsoft Azure. As you can see here, the all the Azure services are mentioned here. And uh, once you create your resource group, so it gets highlighted also. Now let us quickly open our Azure Databricks and let us create our Azure Databricks. So for this, once we come here, we need to just simply create. And here they ask for basic details like uh, your resource group, then workspace name region. So let us fill up one by one. So here, as we don't have any resource group, so we'll be creating a new resource group. As we are working on a demo, so let's name it as Azure Databricks demo. And let's create it. Now that we have created the resource group, now they ask for the workspace name. So we'll give it a unique name. You can keep it any. So let's name it as Azure Data Bricks hands on. And then you can choose your region. So here you find uh, different types of region where you can like work or create your Azure Data Bricks. So it is up to you, whatever region you choose. For me, I'll be keeping West US as it is. After that, we come to the pricing tier. So here there are three types, standard, premium and trial. So as we are working on the, like we are just having a practical knowledge, we will be using the trial version. 
and we'll just review and create. Now here you can just check on to your uh, whatever details you had filled previously, whether it is correct or no. So once it is validated, we can just create this Databricks. Now, as you can see, they are initializing the deployment. So it may take a while to create a Databricks. All right, so here you see the deployment is in progress. So once your deployment is complete, you can go to your uh, resource and here you land up to your Databricks page. Now here what we need to do is launch our workspace. So it will move us to our main Azure portal. So it will sign us in the Azure Databricks. So this is the dashboard of the Databricks. Now here you have different options like notebook and um, data import, partner connect, transform data and many other things. Here you can set up your workspace like create a cluster, import data, build a data pipeline as well. Now one thing I should tell you that Databricks works on DBFS. Now what do you mean by DBFS is? Well DBFS is nothing but Databricks file system which is a distributed file system mounted on Azure Databricks workspace and are available on the Azure Databricks cluster. So it allows you to interact with the object storage using directory and file semantics instead of cloud specific API commands and it helps you out to mount cloud object storage location so that you can map your storage credentials to the path in the Azure Databricks workspace. It also simplifies the process of persisting files to object storage allowing the virtual machines and attacked volume storage to be safely deleted on the cluster termination. Well, these are the things which you can like implement it while you're working with the Azure Databricks. Now let's get back to our Databricks. Now that we have come to this page. So the first thing to be done over here is to create a cluster. Now we go to create a cluster. Now here we go to create compute. Now here as you can see, we have the cluster name. So here we can edit the cluster name based on your requirement. So let us keep it as a Databricks cluster. And after this, we have the policy. So here policy is nothing but a cluster policy defines the limit on the attributes available during the cluster creation. So here we have different types of policies that is unrestricted personal compute, power user compute, shared compute. So we will keep it unrestricted for time being. Now there are two types of cluster mode. One is multi node and single node. So in multi node, we can specify the minimum number of workers and the maximum number of workers. So here minimum numbers can be two or you can specify it upon. This is basically a standard limit for minimum and maximum, whereas you can change it accordingly based on your requirement. So now as of now as we are only practicing, so we will just disable this auto scaling and we can specify our number of workers over here. So we can keep only one worker as it is only for practicing. Whereas we can also like change the timings for termination if the particular cluster is inactive. So you can specify that much of time to it. Apart from that, we have our access mode. That is nothing but uh, there are three types of access mode that is single user, shared user and no isolation shared. So here we will keep it as it is and your single user access is nothing but a subscription. After that we come to our performance. So here we need to specify our runtime version. So here in our case it is runtime 11.3 LTS Kala 2.12 and our work type can be standard whereas there are other versions as well, but as of now we don't require much of it. So we'll be going with the standard version itself. And whereas we have already specified our workers and termination time is also being mentioned. Now here towards your right, you can see the whole summary of your cluster. What have you been uh, like creating? So once you review it, you can just create this particular cluster. Now, as you can see, it is loading it takes a while to like create a cluster here in this section you see the status of your cluster so currently it is in a pending mode like it has been creating so we'll wait for a while 
so now as you can see our uh, cluster has been created and it is in the running mode now after this what we need to do is go back to our main dashboard and we need to create a new notebook so we'll create a new notebook over here and here we have already specified the cluster so we had created now so it has automatically taken and uh, here we need to specify our default language so you can choose any of them so here there, there are four types of languages which you can choose here i would be taking scala for now and we can give a simple name to this notebook that is it can be anything of your choice so let us name it as databricks notebook and let's create so this will start very quickly it doesn't take that much of time now here it is like you need to like run your command over here so you just need to type down your command and just hit enter and it starts running so now in this we will know how to upload a file through a uh, c azure storage service that is our azure blob storage so it's basically if we need to first integrate the azure blob storage so let us know how so before this we need to go back to our azure portal and here we need to first create our storage account so here as you can see we have our storage accounts and here we'll create our blob storage so let's create so now here for creating storage account you need to give your details over here so as here we had already created the resource group previously while creating a data brick so we would be selecting the same and after that we will give a storage account name so let us name it as data bricks storage account and in region we need to provide the specific region whichever you like to choose so as previous i had chosen west us so i'll be choosing that as well and here now when we come to the performance so here we can choose any of those um, any of the two options given below so here we have standard and premium so currently we will be going with the standard version and when we talk about redundancy so here we have two types of redundancy as you can see locally redundant storage here it means the low cost option with the basic protection against server rack and drive play areas recommended for non critical scenarios whereas geo redundant storage is like for intermediate option with failover capabilities in secondary region recommended for backup scenarios so locally means it happens within the region not across the whole world so here we will be choosing the locally redundant storage now uh, we have specified everything so now let us review so here before like creating you need to check all your details once you review it just create and your storage account is in initialization stage so once it gets deployed we will start working on that so now our deployment is complete so we can go to our resource so here all of the permissions are automatically managed within the same resource group so we don't have to worry about any permissions requirement so now that we have created our storage account now here we need to create our container so we'll go to our containers and we'll so here we can give it a name to our container it can be anything name it as storage account 1 and let's just create so as you can see our container has been created now we will quickly go on to this container and here we don't have anything in this container so the container is empty now we need to upload some files in this particular container so we'll just quickly go to upload and here we will go to select file so here what does it do it will get connected to my windows file you can take any file so here so as of now i will just take a normal excel a csv file and we'll just simply upload it well you can upload more than one files if you want to like upload it in the containers you can also have a larger files but it may cost 
according to the given size now we have a file in place and we also have created our notebooks so now we have to integrate the blob storage with the data bridge so for that we need to run a code now here the code looks a bit complex so that here so here first we need to create a token so that we can get access to the files so we'll just copy this whole code so that it, there's nothing to memorize this can be provided to you while you are practicing so now we'll just copy paste the whole command so here now as you can see the container name so here we need to specify the container name and the storage account that we have created so we'll quickly go back to our azure portal and we will fill up the details so as they asked for the container name so here we need to specify our container name and the storage account which we have created so let's quickly go back to our azure portal and here as you can see your container name is given so we'll just quickly copy that okay, where did it go let's go back and we'll just copy this name and we'll paste it here now same thing to be done with our storage account so we'll go back to our storage account and here we'll see this is our storage account name so we'll just copy and we'll just paste it over here now for the sos token we need to go back to our containers and here we will go to the shared access signature so here we will be getting our sas sas tokens so sas token can be generated for a limited amount like uh, for a given period of time so you need to specify like when you create your sas token so the time it has been started it would be valid from the time it has been started till its time of expiry so we'll just allow the services containers and the objects and let the time be as it is as it has been specified and now let's generate so now here as you can see you can find your sas token now we need to just simply copy this and go back to our data breaks and we'll paste it over here so we have just added our sas token let us just uh, verify whether it has been correctly copied or no so i feel everything looks perfect rest other things remains to be same so here what happens you keep on creating new variables so here we have created a url so by appending the container and the storage account so once we like we specify our url and our configuration then it comes the db utils so here we specify our source mount point and our maps to that particular token so this is basically where the data bricks helps you like get uh, your sources from your different like different services so here the data bricks plays the role where it provides you the data which from where you want to extract from and it shows it over here and now you just hit shift plus enter so now it is like running the command so here it what does it do as we had discussed in our architecture so it communicates first with the data bricks and then it communicates with our cluster and get all the sources and then shows its result on the cluster itself so as you can see your command has been run okay so it shows some error over here so let's quickly solve that error all right now let's quickly run it again so it may take a while so here as i said uh, it will first connect with the data bricks and then communicate with that and then it will communicate with your cluster and get all the resources from there so here as you can see they have specified your container name storage name and your token which has been specified now what we need to do is check whether our file has been 
uh, take uh, extracted from our storage account or no. So here we'll specify uh, first we'll specify our variable. So let's specify with park dot read. And now we're gonna give the format of the file. So as we had uh, uploaded the CSV file, so we'll just specify it over here. CSV. And then we can give them some of the options that uh, they should show. So let's give it an option. Like we can ask them to show the header and their value should be true. Then we can also specify the inverse screen mark. So we'll just add on that as well. And for the efficient uh, data requirement, we will just provide them with a mode that can be fail fast mode. And then we upload the, uh, like mentioned, the file name. So here we paste this mount slash staging that is our mount point and we'll paste it over here. And then we will specify our file name that is Let's go to our containers. Let's check what's the name. Python one dot CSV. Let's copy the name and we'll paste it. So now let's just shift enter. Uh, so it shows some error. Let's see what is it. Okay. So here we had specified a wrong command. So let's just resolve it. And let's run it again. All right, so let us see how it looks like. So now just do tf dot show and let's specify some amount and just shift enter. So as you can see, so they have mentioned here the decimal and uh, description the percentage your uh, headers have been provided and the number of the number of rows that we required they have specified that so this is how we integrate the two services and we process data through databricks now let us look on to some of the popular use cases that makes azure databricks in a huge demand well databricks isn't a catch all solution for every business scenario so there are the best use cases for Azure Databricks. First is database and mainframe modernization. Data storage, collection, and processing are incredibly important in modern businesses. Well, if you're looking to modernize your data lakes or looking into mainframe modernization applications, then Azure Databricks has all the integrations you need. Next is machine learning production pipeline. Here, using the underlying power of ML flow, Databricks is a good choice if you need to get machine learning applications into production. Getting data science out of the development and into production is a common problem, and Azure Databricks can help you streamline that workflow. If you talk about big data processing, then Azure Databricks is one of the most cost effective options for big data processing. In terms of performance, versus cost, it offers higher efficiency. If your business needs the best performance for one-demand data processing, then Databricks will likely be your best choice. Next is business intelligence integration. Integrating business intelligence tools means you can open your data lake to analysts and engineer more easily. There's no need for creation of new pipelines when analysts need access to new data. The data can be shared through SQL Analytics, Power BI, and Tableau. If this is a bottleneck for your business, then Databricks will help you enable your business intelligence team. Now, these are the four popular use cases by Azure Databricks. If your business fits in one of these use cases, then it might be the solution for you. So this was all about Azure Databricks. I hope you understood from the start to the finish. Now, if you wish to or you are planning to enroll yourself in Azure certification course, then do check out to the link given below in the description. Until then, happy learning.
I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!